So one of my favorite interviews for this story was with Mara O'Neill. She's the former chief innovation officer at USAID. She emphasized that there's a difference between invention, improvements, and innovation. To me, the word that always comes to mind is progress. Like really we're trying to make progress and innovation is one way to get there. It often means applying approaches and principles that can accelerate our work. One example of that would be human-centered design, something we've covered at DevEx before. Another example would be the lean startup methodology, very popular in Silicon Valley, directly relevant to the work that we're doing in global health, international development, humanitarian response. This seems obvious, but if you're thinking of launching some kind of innovation initiative within your organization, you should start by asking people who have been there, done that, and tried it within this sector. One great example is Chris Fabian. He co-founded UNICEF Innovation. And he actually says that if he were to do it all over again, he would do it differently. He said he would actually approach innovation as a pyramid. And at the bottom of that pyramid would be adopting a set of principles. UNICEF Innovation actually has a set of principles that it wants organizations within this space to take a look at and consider using themselves. And that is where Chris would begin. Next step is all about identifying partners. Start with the principles and then look for partners that make sense. Then it would be all about gathering real-time data, and we talk about ways that UNICEF has done that. Finally, it's supporting local entrepreneurs. This has been a shift, actually, in the strategy for UNICEF, and other organizations I've spoken with have also talked about the need to make sure we're acting locally in these innovation initiatives. You know, there is no one-size-fits-all model for innovation in this sector. There are a few different models though that seem to work for people. One example is the innovation lab, you know, an in-house innovation unit. Another example is innovation labs in country offices. And that is great because it allows local entrepreneurs and local innovators who don't necessarily work for your organization to get involved and kind of co-create solutions to some of the problems you're working on. Another model that I had never heard of but makes a lot of sense is roving innovation champions, right? Have people at your organization who are out there making connections, finding people who can support your work and bring new ideas to what you're trying to do. Another model that seems to work pretty well is incubators or accelerators that bring innovators into your organization and you work with them for a while even though they might not continue on with you permanently. In the process of reporting this story, I was speaking with someone who said, of course you've spoken with the International Development Innovation Alliance, right? I actually had never heard of this. IDIA, so I googled IDIA. Turns out there's a forum for the innovation leads at major global development agencies, USAID, DFID, Rockefeller, Gates, the World Bank, Results for Development, etc. They meet frequently to talk about what is and isn't working when it comes to bringing innovation into their organization. They actually recently came together in Toronto for a forum where they really discussed innovation in the sector. While I wasn't able to go in person, the IDIA did share with DevEx some of their takeaways. Uh, there's a report that they've put together on what does and doesn't work for innovation within this sector. So I was able to look over that and pull out some takeaways for our DevEx readers and really excited to be able to include that in this story. Just comment on the story, let us know what innovation looks like at your organization, what challenges you're working through, what questions you have, and hopefully together we can all move toward a better model in a sector that definitely needs innovation.